Welcome to my Starlink video. My journey in Starlink land began February 20th, 2021, when I was alerted that in my area, I was able to now potentially receive Starlink service and that I would be able to put down a deposit. And at some point I would have a dishy shipped to me, uh, if that makes sense. And so uh, if you carry forward from that journey, though, uh, we get to a point where one year later, in 2022, February 24th, one year and three days later at 2.02 p.m., my dishy was delivered. So it was shipped right at a year. It arrived right at a year and four days later. And I was so excited. And so I'll take you to the beginning of my unboxing of the equipment and my long journey that began thereafter. If you get to <laughs> Hello. <laughs> All right, welcome to my unboxing video of the Starlink. Like I've been waiting for almost two years for this, or a year and a half since I put my deposit down, and they finally got service available in my area. So super happy about this. I'm gonna go ahead and try not to kill myself unboxing this, but we have four spots that would appear that have some tape. I'm so excited about this. And then the same thing here. Okay, we have now opened up the main box. We will open it up. We have some pretty nice paper here. Fantastic plastic. I don't think we'll need that. But up here, our base for the side for the outdoor mounting. Another separator. And What's weird is there's fingerprints on this. There's a high probability someone opened this, um, but it's okay. I suppose we'll, we'll let that be for now. So we have the base, we have their installation guide, and we have the actual router device. So this whole device was about 600 bucks, um, including the satellite, $99 deposit, and as you'll see, like the cable looks like it's physically attached to the satellite, like it's not able to be separated. So we'll go ahead and just slide you in your base and click in. So it's happy, fantastic. So we've got that. We'll get out the rest of the cable and then we'll take the box off the table. So we are left with a very scant number of pieces here. Got our plug, power to plug this in. It looks like we have only wireless on this. So where's my bridged ethernet cable? We'll get back to that here in a minute. So take a look at this and then uh, we'll see what we've got. All right, so exactly that. There is no ethernet adapter. So right at that moment, that same day on February 24th, if you notice in the left-hand side of this, I went ahead and ordered an ethernet adapter as well as a long wall mount uh, kit. Uh, so now we'll go ahead and go out in the garage and get this thing set up and tested. Uh, and then um, I'm assuming that'll be in pretty quickly. All right, so as you can see, we have our Starlink dish. Um, or as others will have to call it dishy. Uh, it's on its base and it's currently plugged in. I figured out what I'm missing is the ethernet adapter, actually. So there's a $20 component that just goes in the USB inline coming back from the dish that then is um, able to convert this to US, or from USB to ethernet, adding it to the router and the adapter here. So right now I've got my wireless receiver set up on top of this bookcase. We've got power here and I've got the dish antenna. So I'm gonna go ahead and go outside and set this in a clear field of view temporarily until I roof, my roof mount gets here. Um, and we'll go ahead and do that. So let's get ready. Go out in the cold snow. I'll get prepped and take this outside and I'll come right back to you. All right, so after like 40 minutes or something of wrestling with this thing, uh, because the cable is massively inflexible uh, you have to take it out and walk long distances and untangle it because it doesn't come and coil correctly. Um, or someone already opened the box. I'm going to go ahead and see about powering this thing up and seeing if we can watch the antenna do its thing. All right, so we'll walk outside and wait. Where'd the snow go? 
I guess, uh, I guess we'll have to be out at the antenna next. So follow me out here. Before we get into the rest of the video, I do want to take a second to talk about Starlink support because I think they're actually really good. You know, at first I had this question as to with this giant company, is the support actually going to be you know, human and responsive or is it going to be like this horrible thing? And it took a minute for the first response. If you notice, I put this in on 316. I said, I love Starlink, starting with that. Uh, and then I said, I have tried service. I've had service a month already. Go by deep into another one. I can't use my service reliably yet. I've been waiting on a roof mount and an Ethernet adapter to bring this into my whole system. And I'd like to know the status of my order and also a refund of one month of service. What's really cool is Kira. I got assigned 321. So I've already, I waited five or six days and I was like, man, maybe they're never going to respond. But she responded first just with description, service credit details, $99 issued back to me. Um, and then before I even got the response from her, right? So it says, hey, yes, you're getting your credit. They additionally gave me two credits um, from that point. Um, but hi, Matt. Thanks for reaching out to Sterling Support. We apologize in the delay, which is great. I had this human response. And we've processed one month service credit. So thank you very much, Starlink. It was awesome of them uh, due to the shipping delay and said, hey, listen, you see a new ship time. And the reason they said that was I actually watched the ship date shift out every week. Every week that I would look at it, it would go out another week. Um, and so it was just very frustrating. And so that's why I put in this ticket. Um, and they basically said, hey, uh, multiple items will be available. You know, we'll get it you know, shipped earlier, basically. Um, so they, they basically put a, a faster ship on it or should they said they were going to. So the next thing that happened was I reached back out on the seventh. So this is now another three weeks. And I was like, listen, I still haven't received my order. I hope you can help me, you know, understand what's going on. Is it going to move again? And she said, hey, Matt, we see it's four, four to four, ten now. Um, it should get shipped sooner because we're going to make it eligible for priority packing uh, and, and very much uh, get that out to you much quicker. I then responded back and just said, hey, thank you so very much. I'm really excited to finish this very video you're watching now. And she said, you're very welcome, Matt. We're excited for you to finish the video as well. So I'll bring you back into the rest of the unboxing, but I just wanted to touch on how great their support was throughout this. And it really made me feel warm about continuing the service, even as a fairly expensive failover circuit uh, in, my, in my environment. It's been about eight weeks since we first unboxed that. And the reason is we had to order an ethernet adapter and a stand to hold the, the antenna. So we actually have bought the most expensive stand in the interim during that eight weeks. And it's a Blackstone grill. No, I kid, but the problem is you actually have to have this cone of view available. And the way my roof sets up, um, I actually do have a gap in, in that window that's, that's fixed by this. But I'll be mounting this later and we'll get a shot of that for the video for you. But we're going to go inside now and uh, take a look at the, uh, at the unboxing of the equipment that just came in. And we have received two boxes from Space Exploration Technologies. Um, and so we've got what's presumably our ethernet cable and our roof mounting kit. So let's go ahead and start with the ethernet cable here, which they have a handy pull tab on the side for opening, which makes this quite easy. And yeah, it's a USB-C plug to go into the, into the router uh, and then the ethernet cable that will continue on to power the remainder of the cable out to the antenna. So we do have that. Um, and let's take a look at this, which I've got someone coming to professionally mount, but I will go ahead and take a look and make sure the parts are not damaged uh, before they come. They've taped this similar kind of apparatus though, um, but we can get through it fairly easily. So let's take a look. I guess I didn't have to tear that completely, but that's okay. Gosh. There's a few loose parts in here, um, but it does appear that we have an intact unit. We'll see. Ah. Okay. There's the roof now. And then the rest of the hardware and a triangular piece of plastic, presumably to cover this after attaching it to the roof. Template guide, a couple of screws, and a book, along with some silicone for sealing off the device, and some sort of a cover, which I presume, and then I would imagine the mounting hardware. Yep, of various different types for, oh, for holding the cable up against the, the roof line, huzzah. All right, so the next thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and get this ethernet plugged in um, and make sure that the antenna comes back up and then once we're done with that, we're going to go down to the computer and do a little testing. So join you down there. 
We are all installed. I'll take you on the quick tour. We're in the garage. We have the cabling tightened up. It's all clean and tight on the side. We have the antenna as well as the ethernet going up into their respective locations and our Starlink device on the top of the shelf. It's not producing any wireless at this point. It is absolutely just there to power the antenna, give it its instructions and telemetry and things, um, and then bring back the ethernet over the adapter that you can't see because it's nice and tightly tucked up there. All right, outside now you see Dishy. It is mounted with the cable coming out that powers it up to their approved arm, and it's also sitting in its position being fully functional. So I uh, did a really good job of getting the cabling all taken care of very nicely. And uh, I think we're ready to put this as our primary failover internet. Welcome to my lair. No, just kidding. Downstairs now at the network equipment rack, down in my office where I spend most of my time. Uh, and I'll go ahead and show you how I have it set up. The initial intention of this was for me to have my network come in for my main network and have Starlink be my failover, which I have some capabilities with the current setup I have. I'll probably play around with some routing and some things like that so I can move a couple of VLANs off to that router. But essentially, I am going to show you a failover and we're gonna look at the two different internet speeds and kind of see what we have. The one downside I'll say as I've done the testing is that I am behind carrier grade NAT on the new uh, Starlink connection from Dishy upstairs, uh, but it's ping time's really good and its speed's pretty decent. And we'll, we'll show that at the desk here in a second, uh, and then we'll uh, show the comparison. So I will go ahead and pull the failover link now, and we should watch it fail over pretty quickly to seeing a pretty decent amount of traffic happening on the secondary WAN. Pretty much those connections that already have handshakes are resetting. The ones that are UDP are just going, hey, I'm a new person coming from this IP. But essentially, we are now at a point where I'm using the Starlink as backup so that we can gather some speed tests and then fail back over. Uh, understand I'm not completely separating my network and maybe I will do a second one uh, after that or a third comparison where I have just the dedicated network uh, connection, not with all the other things on my network consuming things. I'll see you at the desk. And for about 12 hours, six on each uh, different network, I tested what those throughputs and speeds were. Now, remember, the rest of my network was also consuming uh, internet and presumably speed capabilities pretty much at any given time. I have a fairly large uh, separate set of networks that are IoT, lab, uh, other things that consume internet pretty constantly. So these numbers were real world experience numbers for that next new connection. And if you look at this, I have on the left would be in the blue, that's Starlink, and on the right is Cox. And I went through download speed, upload speed, ping or delay of each packet coming back, and then jitter, or the difference in each timing of each packet coming back to the same source, uh, same destination, from the same destination. So on the left-hand side on the download speed, we're at 83 megs, pretty constant. So for about six hours, testing every two minutes, I still managed to have an average of 83.81 uh, or so 84 or so uh, megabits per second. Uh, compared to Cox, which is 403, that's obviously not near as much, but in the need to fail over, which I actually have already experienced uh, since the beginning of making this video, I had a problem where Cox wasn't fully down. I will say my Unify didn't fail over very nicely. Obviously we're gonna be trying different firewalls and things, probably gonna go to a Fortinet. But on, on this one, it did fail over and I was able to pull the Cox link so that it physically failed over as I demonstrated in the video. I had perfect uh, video conference capabilities. Things worked quite well. I have about 8.8 .8 megs upload capability, which I would guess is probably about a 10 average and that other number was probably 100 as compared to 33 megabits by, by Cox from the upload side. Uh, ping is substantially higher, right? I go from a 16 millisecond average latency to a 41 millisecond, so more than double, but still well within reason, right? It's not 100, it's not 400, it's not 1,000 or a second, right? We're still seeing about 40 milliseconds, so not that bad. Uh, the jitter also, while it's now more than quadrupled, but obviously I'm going up to a link, I'm going down to a ground station, I'm traveling via fiber from there, presumably, uh, versus being on a CMTS or cable modem termination system that then egresses directly to uh, some of those source servers that I'm pinging. But, but ultimately, 12.7 still is doable uh, from the perspective of, of VoIP or, or video 
uh, communications. But you might see some issues if that number were to, to drift up uh, as well. But ultimately, from a failover internet perspective, I feel like I have a decent capacitance uh, to continue my day if I do have a, an outage of my primary internet source. So thank you so much for, for being with me on this video. Uh, I just wanted to say that I am so very happy that I do now have a failover internet. I'm extremely happy with the support I received from Starlink. And I think that even though they have a massive operation they're trying to undertake, they still have a fairly decent support, logistics problems aside. So thank you so much for watching. Appreciate you.